Now it's time for the ultimate treat, my chocolate covered caramel bars. Think candy bar. And we're gonna really master some great techniques, making a cookie base, a caramel layer, and enrobing the entire bars in milk chocolate. I'll start with the cookie base. I've got half a cup of room temperature unsalted butter. So now that I've softened this up, I can add half a cup of sugar and I'll just stir this to blend. Now that that's blended, I can add a single egg yolk. A cup and a quarter of all-purpose flour and a pinch of salt. There we go. I'm stirring this to blend it, but it's not going to come together like a cookie dough. It's actually going to be a crumbly mixture. The more crumbly texture means it's actually going to cut more cleanly. In addition to being crumbly, it's an even buttery color, and that's your sign that your mixture is ready to put into your pan, which I've already lined with parchment paper. I spread it out, making sure you press it right into corners of your pan, because you don't want that caramel seeping over the sides of the cookie base. And now this is ready for the oven. It takes about 15 minutes at 350. Now what's unusual about this particular recipe is that you don't have to let the base cool, like the Nanaimo bars, before you put on the next layer. I actually want to make the caramel while the base is baking and pour it on while both the base and the caramel are hot. The reason I put hot caramel on top of the hot crust is because the two will fuse together, making it easier to slice without losing the caramel topping. So I start things off not by adding sugar, but actually water. A third of a cup goes in the bottom of the pot. I'll add three quarters of a cup of granulated sugar at this point on top of the water. Now I don't add cream to this recipe, but I do add sweetened condensed milk. I need a third of a cup. Now the final ingredient, and I'm not going to add it yet, in terms of sugar, is a third of a cup of corn syrup. Before you start cooking caramel, you want to have all your ingredients on hand, because once it starts, you can't walk away. So I've got my corn syrup that I'm going to add once it starts boiling. Then I'll be adding butter later on, at the very end, vanilla and salt. And at this point, I'm going to turn the mixture on high heat. And this is a caramel you actually stir, and you stir constantly. But I have an instant read thermometer, so at every step of the way, I can keep tabs because there are specific temperatures you want to hit to get that perfect texture and that satiny feel when you bite into the caramel. Now that it started boiling, I can add the corn syrup. I'll return that to a boil, and then I'll actually reduce the heat a little bit. Part of the reason for reducing the heat is to control the cooking so I can really watch that time, but also to prevent scorching. That condensed milk wants to caramelize very quickly. All right, now that I've crossed 110, I can add my butter. A quarter cup of unsalted butter, and I add it at once. I keep now the heat the same, and now we keep cooking it to 115 Celsius and my color tone is immediately starting to change. Mmm, and just lean over the pot. It's starting to smell like caramel. Now I'll remove it from the heat to stop the cooking. Now I'll add half a teaspoon of salt and vanilla. So that gets stirred right at the very end. And now it's time to pull out that cookie crust from the oven. Beautiful. I pour this on top. Gotta love that. I'll give this a swirl just to get the caramel into the corners. This needs time to cool and set. 
Once this is cooled, I can cut it into those little bars, and then we get to play with melted chocolate. For the ultimate bar, what could be better than a shortbread base topped with caramel and then the whole thing completely covered in milk chocolate? Well, that's exactly what I'm doing here and it's time to dip these bars in chocolate. But I have to cut them into thin bars first. So here they are after the caramel has set that three hours. Look at that beautiful shine. Ready a clean parchment lined baking tray. And then arrange the bars. The only remaining ingredient left in this recipe is a pound of chocolate. Tempering is the process of heating, cooling, and then gently reheating chocolate so that it sets at room temperature. And this will keep the caramel inside the bars gooey but still set. Without that process, you have to refrigerate your chocolate. When you first melt your chocolate, you want to get it nice and warm, 45 to 48 degrees Celsius. That ensures all the crystals, the cocoa solids, the cocoa butter, all fluid and flowing within the chocolate. Then we get to play with it to cool it down and warm it up a little bit. There we go. I'm in that zone of 45 to 48 degrees, so now it's time to play with the chocolate. When you're tempering chocolate, marble is ideal because it stays cool. But there are also other surfaces that stay cool. A granite countertop or stainless steel. And if you don't have a marble table, well, a marble cheese board will also do. Now what I'm going to do is pour out two thirds of this chocolate right onto the marble. And then this chocolate that's remaining, I'm gonna keep on the tea towel, now I have to get right to work and you keep this chocolate moving. As I'm working it, I can feel it actually thickening and you may have picked up on the difference. There we go. Now that I'm under 27, I know I'm fine. This is that final step to warm it up to between 30 and 31 degrees. So maybe I became a pastry chef so I could play with my food. Because really, this is what it is, plain. There we go. So I'm in the range I need to be. I've got bars ready to dip. I'm going to drop the caramel shortbread bar in, give it a nice even coat. Now that I've dipped my bars, I let them set up until the chocolate has solidified. Then. The last but important step, popping them in the fridge, but only for three to five minutes. And here we are. After you've taken them out of the fridge, you can store them at room temperature. And remember, they'll hold their shape and shine beautifully. These are absolutely spectacular and well worth the effort. 